Hey Gecko. Um I guess in response to your contest. Um uh this is my sharpening system. Uh this is my primary one that I use uh the majority of the time. On this side we have about a sixty grit stone on one side and hundred twenty on the other. A little bit finer. This is uh pretty rough stuff which takes off a lot of metal. I have a seven hundred grit uh Japanese water stone and a seven hundred fifty grit uh, Smith's Diamond Stone. Usually this is for heavy removal when a blade really needs to be touched up either for um, reprofiling or uh, if it's just really dull. Uh, usually I'll start either between one of these two. This is a thousand grit uh, Japanese Water Stone, a six thousand grit, and then we have a uh, Natural Stone which is rated at a thousand, fifteen thousand grit. Uh, we have an Arkansas stone back here. I'm not sure what this is. It's a Smith's brand. It's just it was just so old as a fine stone. Uh, I don't use this so much. This is pretty beat up, and um, I use this one more so now. Uh, I usually get a mirror polish about here. Uh, although it's kind of a foggy mirror polish, um, I'll have a mirror polish once I get here. However, this stone gives kind of a an uneven mirror polish. Um, I think it's due to the fact that um, I'm not really consistent on my sharpening. Uh, I might sharpen one area more than another and uh, by not doing consistent strokes I get that. Um, I have gotten mirror polishes off it if I tried real hard. Uh, what's much easier is if I just use a strop. Um, this was the first strop I owned. Uh, it's BTEL. Um, I have some of the compound not really compound, it's just a slurry that comes off of Japanese water stones. Put on the back here, uh, on the vinyl side, just to help kind of polish it up. See right here that there's a chunk missing out of it, and uh, there's a, a crap load of compound on the side. And this is kind of a harder leather, which I uh, find it works all right. Um, I was watching YouTube, uh, I think it was Jay Davis's channel, that uh, he showed me his straps. And I decided to make one of my own. It's just a piece of leather with some green compound melted onto it, uh, nailed to a wooden block. Not ideal, but um, it seems to work for me just fine. I have one that's bare that I'll usually finish on, and I could get a pretty decent mirror polish out of that. So this is my primary sharpening system that I use. Um, you can see on this Spyderco stretch, uh, it is no longer the factory edge. You can see it's higher up and it is also convex. Uh, I actually use your convexing t tutorial to convex this edge uh, and it's pretty darn sharp. Uh, my most recent knife I've sharpened is this uh, Endura ZDP. Um, I find that ZDP isn't that bad to sharpen, uh, especially with uh, stones. Um, it seems like modern materials don't really cause it a problem. Um, I am not a perfect sharpener. I've been sharpening for maybe about 10 or so years. Um, if you can see here that there's not really, at the very tip, that is not a consistent one. I tend to nose dive the tip into the stone. So it gives me kind of an uneven edge. This is a Buck Vantage uh, S30V. Back when it was cheap, uh, I got this one for about 30 bucks. And uh, recently, I've kind of gotten into the convexing uh, that so many of the YouTube knife makers seem to be getting into. Uh, so usually I sharpen my, I guess this, is my, this was my first custom knife on uh, stones, but now I kind of given into the mouse pad and paper. Uh, I'll still finish on stones, but um, for more of the heavy materials removal, I don't use this set anymore. I use more of the paper and mouse pad. That kind of stuff. So yeah, it pulls material off so much faster and uh, you don't worry about cutting up your stones. Uh, maybe wondering why this material is here. Um, this is kind of for curved edges, recurved edges. Um, I really had no idea what I was doing the first time I sharpened a recurve blade. I tried using the corner of a stone. I found that it actually uh, was pretty hard to do and I dulled it and I cut my stone a whole bunch of times. So. What I did was I actually got a can and used this curved surface 
to sharpen up uh, my recurved blade knife. And if you kind of want it, it uh, more of a, as a convex edge on the curve of your knife, like you see here, I found that if you use a soft bottle uh, like this, that kind of has some give. It kind of gives the same effect as you would a, a straight edge and a mouse pad in comparison. So if you wanted a straight V edge on a recurve blade, you'd use something harder. And if you wanted a convex edge on a recurve blade, you'd use something softer. So yeah, that's pretty much about it. Um, you can see I don't really care how flat my stone is. That's pretty curved up already. Um, I find that if you just adjust the angle as you're as you're uh, rubbing against the stone, you kind of just uh, keep your angle by feel. Um, it didn't come. I ruined plenty of knives sharpening, or I ruined the finishes. Don't really care um, as long as the knife works. I guess here's just a quick cutting demo with uh, phone book paper. I'll just try to get this angle right. No problems with the spider co. Here's the sword that I've sharpened up. Also no problem. And this is my VG10 stretch. Also no problem with the reduced angle. I've also found that I probably pushed the limit of the VG10 steel in this case because um, besides cutting food if I hit anything hard it pretty much knocks the teeth off of it and will lose its razorness. I won't be able to split hairs anymore. But in all practical senses, it'll still stay sharp. You'll be able to cut paper, um, not phone book paper, just printer paper. Anyways, um, yeah, hope this taught you guys something. And